Hey guys, uh, today is October 29th, 2020, and we had a little uh, occurrence here of uh, undesirable nature, but I think I want to share it with you anyway. Uh, our Parun shark catfish have attacked Indian shovel nose catfish and uh, have done pretty good damage to it. From what I could see, Haroons are not uh, bottom catfish, they're midwater fish and they're, uh, they're pelagic, constantly on the move, they're almost never on the bottom, it's either uh, in the middle of the water column or closer to the top, they always move around and they would come down uh, because Indian shovel nose would, um, that, that's the bottom catfish, they live on the bottom. They would just swim from the top and uh, approach the uh, Indian shovel nose from above and uh, and bite it right, right um, across the dorsal, dorsal fin and across the body, right on the top. And they would keep doing and doing and doing it um, until uh, they damage the dorsal, of course and uh, they damaged the skin on the Indian shovel nose that the skin started to peel off. But anyhow, when I saw it, I uh, separated the uh, Indian shovel nose and I assumed this was because Peruns, especially this smaller one, it's the most more aggressive one than the bigger one, um, were hungry. Uh, once, about uh, probably three years ago, I saw I saw them uh, kill a two-foot Distichotus fasciatus, just like that guy. Only this guy is about maybe 20 inches. My other Distichotus was 24 inches, and that was because they got hungry. I mean, they're the amount I was feeding them wasn't adequate because they were they kept growing and I misjudged how much I need to feed them. So they uh, they couldn't eat that uh, distichotus, of course, but they kept biting it until and that all happened overnight. And in the morning the, there was nothing I could do anymore. The distichotus was dying and was dead pretty soon. Again, this is a bigger one, about three and a half foot. This is the three foot. I think the bigger one is the female. The smaller is the male. They are the only pair that I left in this tank. Originally, I rescued six Peroon shark catfish from uh, Dayton, Ohio, from Gerber's Pets. That's where they came from in March 2016, at about one and a half, two foot length. So they've been with us, uh, what, four years now? Four and a half years. So they're about, uh, I'd say about six and a half years old or so, seven years old. They were badly stunned anyway at Gerber's. They had them there for a long time in a smallish tanks. Anyhow, so uh, I thought that was because of the feeding again, not enough food because of the hunger. So I gave uh, them a lot more food that, that day and they ate their fill, and I th thought that that would be fine. But in the morning, again, there was more damage on the Indian shovel nose. So this time around, it wasn't just the, uh, the hunger. I don't know why they kept biting it, even though they were a fool. I'm gonna show you the Indian shovel nose uh, Again, uh, viewer discretion advised, it's kind of gruesome. Indian shovel nose is about two and a half foot, approaching three feet. And he's sitting currently in a, growing his new skin in a 240 gallon tank. That's the poor guy.
Usually it's no biggie for catfish to lose that much skin. They will grow it back just fine. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. Of course it breaks my heart to see the fish like that. But uh, trying to do honest reporting here and uh, so oftentimes it happens like that when you try to come together fish that uh, that can do such damage to each other in uh, confined quarters. It's always uh, vigilance and it's always a concern and always a you always have to observe closely what's happening in your tank uh, at the feeding and outside the feeding that happens to avoid stuff like that but uh, all in all um, our hobby is as I like to say it's a gamble you never know what uh, really will happen and often you can only analyze things in the in the retrospect looking back Ten days later. That's about uh, 16 or 17 days in. That's three weeks. This is about a month. All right, he's been here for uh, over a month now and looks more or less healed and I'm gonna try it again in the 4500 gallon where it come from I just added uh, clove oil about uh, three droplets to a gallon three four so uh, the catfish is more or less anesthetized but uh, still moving I'm afraid to go farther and overdose so we're gonna Scoop him up and put him back in the 4500 gallon. When I turn him over, he pretty much stays more or less turned over. As you can see, so that means he's mostly out, not quite out. The reason for uh, for using clove oil is because I was afraid he would thrash around and, and uh, break this 240 gallon glass tank. If he hit uh, the panes hard enough, I think he would separate a seam. So that's why I'm using clove oil to. to sedate the fish. Yeah, that's a piece of cake as, as to how it usually how it usually proceeds. Usually I get a lot more trouble. the perones much better as best I can so hopefully perones will leave him alone now doing well 
It's been about uh, two hours since we transferred him back. The Indian shovel nose is okay. He came he came to it probably in about two or three minutes, maybe five minutes after we took him out of the clove oiled water into this uh, clean water. Thank you for watching guys.